the hanging heads. The weirdest experience I've ever had was at my grandparents' house. My grandparents, on my mother's side, lived in a small town in Iowa. Their house was a light gray, one-story rental that was definitely on the small side. The kitchen table, across from the sink and the stove, was next to the living room entryway. The house only had one bedroom, but the bathroom looked like a bedroom that had been converted by putting a bathtub, toilet, and sink on one side and putting a washer and dryer in the closet. It was cozy. My mom and I visited every chance we got. Much to my delight, my cousin and aunt also visited as frequently as they could. My cousin Tyler is 11 months my junior, and my cousin Samuel is closer to five years younger than him. This experience happened when all of us were at the house together. My aunt, Tyler, and Samuel had gotten there very late, but seeing Tyler made me giddy. He was basically my brother. I have brothers, but they're all much older than me. Tyler and I were two peas in a pod, so to speak. We were so close, people mistook us for siblings, constantly. I hadn't seen him in a while, and I was absolutely jazzed he was finally here. To my horror, everyone else was not as energetic as I was. In fact, everyone was exhausted. We made up beds in the living room and my grandparents' room. I can't remember if this was before or after my grandfather had passed away, to be honest. But I do remember it was a full house. My mom stayed in her parents' room. My aunt laid down on the couch. Samuel laid two mattress cushions on the ground and called it a bed, while Tyler and I shared the pull-out mattress. Like I said, everyone else was tired and so they quickly became frustrated with me being so hyper. I wanted to talk and goof around. I was quickly put in my place, but I was still fairly happy overall. I remember laying there, wide awake, long after everyone else seemed to be asleep. I was daydreaming about going to the park and roughhousing. Eventually it occurred to me that if I went to sleep, I would get to do those things much faster. I tossed and turned a few times and ended up laying on my back looking out into the kitchen. The space between the kitchen and living room was very open. The only wall that was there was actually for a coat closet next to the front door. The rest of it was unimpeded, like it was all one big room. The kitchen was pretty dark that night, and I was definitely afraid of the dark. I stopped daydreaming and just looked out into it. While it made me nervous, I had so much family around me, I wasn't really afraid. I'm not sure what changed. But as I looked out there, I could feel a sense of dread creeping over me. I wanted to look away. I definitely should have. But I didn't know that then. Instead, I got an eyeful of the wildest thing I've ever seen in my life. One moment, I was looking out into my grandparents' kitchen. I could see the white table with its silver legs. I could see the sink and the refrigerator. I could sort of make out the open doorway to the bathroom between the sink and the nearby stove. It was all as it should be, but when I blinked, there was something new. In that instant, there were at least five hanging heads in the entryway to the living room. They were hanging from the white ceiling by braided black hair around where their neck should be. Their cheeks were full and their eyes were wide. Their most distinguishing feature was that they were all colorful. If I remember correctly, there was a blue face, a green, a purple, a red, and a yellow, too. Other than the vibrant colors and the fact that they all seemed a little on the small side, they looked like human heads. Some had wrinkles. One had deep-set eyes. They looked at me for a moment, and they just started laughing. I couldn't hear them laughing, but I could see it. They bounced and swayed with the effort. They would swivel and look at each other while they laughed at me, all without any attached bodies. They were only there for a few seconds. When I first saw them, I froze my mouth gaping. I wasn't sure what I was looking at, but the hair nooses really freaked me out. The colors really reminded me of dreams I'd had when I was much younger. I used to dream of dogs and the like in odd colors, just like they were, but I hadn't done that in years, and I knew I was wide awake. I felt my body start to shake, and I let out this short-lived scream. Just like that, they were gone. My aunt yelled at me for waking her up. Tyler whispered to me through his exhaustion and asked me if I was all right. I tried to tell him what happened, but I got shushed again. I didn't want to get in trouble, but I was scared. I considered running to my mom, but I didn't want to jump off the bed. I scooted closer to Tyler and buried my face in my pillow. I forced myself to fall asleep so I wouldn't be alone with the heads anymore. I have had scarier experiences, but this is the one that's hard for me to tell people. 
The colors of the heads always throws me off. I wish I could explain it. I don't know why they were odd colors or all shrunken in appearance. They were smaller than normal human heads, that's for sure, but it wasn't like they looked like real shrunken heads. I don't know what was going on, and I wish it hadn't happened because it's just so weird. I know I was awake, though, and I can't forget it. And Paul, I don't know if, if do you ever see that movie Shrunken Heads, the uh, Full Moon Features film? Yes. In the 90s? Yeah. I, I A little while back, I read Charlie Band's book. I think it's called Confessions of a Puppet Master, and he talks about making that movie. And he said, that movie should have been a hit, but not, we realized once we screened it that no one could get past the murder of the children at the beginning of the film, which then became the Shrunken Heads. And I thought, it's fascinating it took that long to figure out that the audience would have a hard time getting on board with watching a couple of kids mowed down in front of them as part of your yuck, yuck comedy fest. And yet people love Pet Cemetery. But that's not meant to be a comedy. <laughs> I, well, I assume. Yeah, well, there's, 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 there are strange things. There is a, 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 a classic horror film that very rarely gets shown these days called, is it The Four Schools of Jonathan Drake? Oh, I don't know that one at all. And that's all to do with shrunken heads and, and uh, a family believing that they're cursed. The sons always die mysterious, painful deaths in bed. Um, and it turns out that there is uh, strange things afoot in the uh, in the family, and all is not what it seems. But it's quite a good it's quite a good uh, little boiler. Uh, ghostly boiler type film it just trundles along quite nicely it's one of those films if you've never seen it, it's worth a watch there are far far worse films made in that era that people know probably far better well i gotta say paul speaking of worse films so obviously we, i've got the show weird together and i and we the whole point is like celebrating independent horror films so i i don't put things on the show that i think are shit I, there has to be something i like about them and it's my job. I'm the one who goes through and watches movies until I find something that I think is a good fit for the show. So lately, I've, uh, obviously with everything going on, there's, it doesn't seem to be as many indie horror films coming out at the moment. So and maybe it's just timing too. I'm not sure. I mean, there's some great stuff in cinemas. Uh, Talk to me is fucking brilliant, but that's a little bigger than we would ordinarily put on the show. So I wanted to look for really indie stuff just to try and give some, uh, give some attention to things which might not ordinarily get it. And that led me to cruising through the new releases on Tubi. And you want to talk about a hive of scum and villainy. <laughs> the <laughs> new horror section on Tubi. That's like the bus station in L.A. It, you just, you don't know what's coming off any of the buses. There are several predators hanging around looking for easy prey. It was, yeah, it was scary. And not the fun kind. And so I sat down with a couple of different movies, found one that I actually think is pretty good. I think we we're going to, we might do the show, but there was one on there, man. I sent you the video and I'm not going to say what it is. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to bag on it. I'll tell you off air, but dude, this thing, it looked like someone took a bunch of cut scenes from those interactive movies that came out in the late nineties, combined it with some in-game footage from a modded Grand Theft Auto five and narrated over top of it. And I don't even mean this guy had great narrative voice. It, it sounds like if, like if Barney Fife was reading the Necronomicon to you. <laughs> and, and the lead himself, again, I'm not a fitness model. I'm in way better shape than I used to be, but I'm still never going to be gracing the cover of men's health magazine. This guy you know, you know how we, we, earlier off air, which we'll probably end up sharing somewhere, we were talking about certain people at conventions who like to dress up and do stuff to each other. <laughs> this guy likes to watch in his trench coat. That's that's the kind of situation we're talking about here. He had this big, gross, gray salt and pepper mustache. Um, he again, roughly about the physical dimensions of a softball, blown up to human proportions. It it was nightmare, and again, all of it wrapped in a trench coat straight from 1997 dude i i i tapped out i have seen some trash you and i watched blood sucking pharaohs in pittsburgh together <laughs> i turned this thing off allegedly michael madsen was going to make an appearance at some point but i didn't want to see him like that i felt bad for michael madsen and everyone else who was involved there's a couple other folks whose names were in the credits i recognized 
But the entire time I saw it, it was literally just this plus size gentleman nasally saying strange things while this game footage played in the background. It was inane. Well, I, 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 I didn't know what to take from the bit you shared with me. Uh, I, I didn't understand what was happening on any level. I put it to you that he does not either. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I agree. 